Bill said in the month of October. We'll find out how good a football team we are. I think Auburn's going to find out tonight. We're working our way toward Auburn and Tennessee. Glad to have you with us. Trev Alberts and Mark May with me as always. You know what? We've already had a terrific afternoon of college yeah, football. They say everything's a little bit bigger in Texas. If this week is a big game for the Longhorns, then next week would be supersized against Oklahoma unless the Longhorns couldn't handle K-State. Hmm. Mac Brown's brushed off this big game talk, but he's 9-11 and 11 against top 25 teams in Texas. L. Roberson back in the lineup for K-State and giving the Wildcats a lift, scrambling out of the pocket and scoring. Well, what a great move by Al Roberson, but it was all set up by a terrific block by James Terry. Look at it. Oh! oh Red Roberson, the linebacker, didn't have his head on a swivel. Made it 17 10. A blocked punt turned into a safety. And Roberson, oh, Terry was bidding for a helmet sticker. Beautiful receiver screen. Look at the blocking from the offensive linemen and receivers, and a nice cut move there. That would set up. Roberson going in for a touchdown, 20 to 17. Vince Young played the important series down the stretch at quarterback for Texas, and he hits Tony Jeffrey on the big pass play. This is fourth and goal. Yeah, they go for it on fourth and goal. I don't know if I'd have done it, but they get in, they score the touchdown. The difference to me was Vince Young. He makes this offense completely different. Yes, they had less yardage than Kansas State, but Vincent Young gives them another option. He scrambled time after time. I'm telling you what, he makes Texas complete on offense. 24 to 20, the Longhorns are able to beat Kansas State, and now they head into that showdown with Oklahoma. You know, I, I like the call on the goal line by Mac Brown. I thought it yeah. showed some toughness, some resolve. You guys wanted him to have some attitude. Yeah, they that's, had his, it, that's right? attitude. But if you don't get it, look at the situation they could you be have in right now. You have a backup on the one. You've got a backup on the one. But I think if you look at this game, you look at Kansas State. Once you get inside the 20, that's the red area. They were inside the 20 three times in this football game, came away with three points. You can't have that happen to your offense. You must come away with something. If it's field goals, that's fine. That's at least nine points, and they win the ball game. But you have to score when you get in the red area, touchdowns or field goals. I understand. I just think when you look at this Texas football team right now, we talked about are they tough enough. And to me, this was just Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed. They were just mm -hmm. going at it, taking punch after punch. And I think Texas answered those questions. But I thought Vincent Young, as I said earlier, makes the difference for this offense as a defensive player. Just like Al Roberson on the other side. You go back to pass and you're trying to pass rush. You have to stay in your lanes. You're concerned about him getting out sky. He allows that offense now, I think, to be complete. And I think going next week, playing against Oklahoma, that's the dimension they're going to have to have if they have a chance to beat Oklahoma. He needs to be their starting quarterback. He learned a lot and he grew up today. Texas takes a positive step in the Big 12 race. In the Big 10 race, Iowa had already taken a step back and the reigning co-champions of the Big 10 could ill afford a loss at home to Michigan and Wolverines came in with redemption on their mind after that big woodshed got opened in the big house last year. John Navarre, Braylon Edwards and Michigan up 14 nothing. Nathan Chandler, by Calvin Davis. This is the first touchdown pass Michigan's allowed all season than Chandler to Ochoa. Yeah, you see him back there. The offensive line of Iowa is doing terrific in pass protection. Look at Ramon Ochoa right there. Yes, it is a touchdown. He got the foot down. Touchdown, Iowa. It was very close. In a 30-20 game in the waning moments, Navarre up top, Braylon Edwards. 41 yards is 30 to 27. This a fourth and 12 play after Michigan has let the play clock expire on fourth and seven. Who's that to? Not the black close. Team. Jeremy Lesseur, dejected Iowa fans storming onto the field as they even their Big Ten record at one and one. And Michigan falls out of the national championship race, so there's still a long way to go in the Big Ten. What was key for Iowa, last week they lost to Michigan State four turnovers in that game. Yep. Today they protected the football, they win the game. So Iowa bouncing back after the loss to Michigan State, 30 to 27. The final score there in the SEC, Alabama and Georgia. Bo Freeland had all kind of trouble punting for the tide, and he's got more trouble. Thomas Davis will scoop up the block punt and score. Dogs up 16-3. Bama fumbled the ensuing kickoff. DJ Shockley, Jamario Smith, and the dogs are putting it on the backside of the tie. In the second quarter here, David Green sitting there in the shotgun. Look, Ben Watson, big tight end, easy touchdown, Georgia. 37 to 10. Georgia seemed to be rolling, but Alabama, despite not having Brody Coyle and Spencer Pennington knocked out of the game, Charles Jones a pick six. PAT failed. Alabama had to play its third string quarterback for most of the game. Never got any offense going against that terrific Georgia defense. And 37 23. Dogs didn't score in the second half, but they won the game and they're set up to take on Tennessee on ESPN2 next week. Elsewhere in the SEC. And we'll get to some more on the SEC here. Georgia with the with the victory. Does it bother you at all that the dogs didn't get any offense going in the second half? 
Well, you know, Alabama kept fighting. I mean, you have to understand that. But Georgia got to such a huge lead early in this game. I mean, and sometimes that affects it. But I thought, too, going back, we talked about this earlier, Mike Shula putting Brody Coyle into that game. It was 30-3 to at that time. And now I'm seeing Brody Coyle standing there. I don't know how long is he out. He may be out four or five games. There was no need to put him in that game. I Spencer totally Pennington agree. started because Coyle was hurt. And Coyle came into the game down 30-3. to And he got hit on the second play and was knocked out of the game. Pennington later knocked out as well. Casey Cross has delivered a lot of knockout punches on the road. He's never lost as a starting quarterback on the road for the Vols. Tennessee Auburn coming. College Game Day Scoreboard, presented by Suzuki's award-winning automobiles, motorcycles, ATVs, and marine engines. All proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman Trophy. Major League Baseball Division Series coming up. Just a few minutes, in fact, getting started. Over on ESPN2 right now, the A's trying to finish off the Red Sox 2-0. The A's have the lead on Boston. Boston, of course, fought with the Yankees in the American League East throughout the season, but in a big hole against that fine pitching staff of the Athletics. You can see if the Red Sox can save themselves, no more room for error if Boston wants to extend its run in the postseason. It's getting started right now. Major League Baseball Division Series over on ESPN2. And, of course, we have much more coming up as things continue to go on. The Braves and the Cubs are playing right now. The Braves have the lead on the Cubs as they try to stay alive in that series. The Marlins have finished off the Giants to advance to the National League Championship Series. And we'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Purdue and Illinois. Thanks for joining us on the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Suzuki. Ole Miss in Florida down in the SEC this afternoon after B.J. Simmons dropped 661 yards on Ole Miss. He's the quarterback for Texas Tech. Florida's Max Stark said, you can't even do that on a video game. <laughs> Not even in extended time mode. Eli Manning had himself set up for a big day, but Ben Kroop had a huge day the Gators tied in. He just won't go down, hurtling over people, busting through tackles, and takes it in for the score. Florida's up 7-3. to three. And look at, look at CJ, our Chris, Chris Lee here sitting back there in the shotgun. Gets a little pressure, steps up the throw. Beautiful throw, OJ Small. Look at the beautiful catch inside the five-yard line. And then Leak would look for Small again, and the freshman quarterback for the Gators seemed to be riddling the Rebels. Oh, that's terrific grab by Small. Full extension. A layout as Florida had the 14-3 lead, but Ole Miss able to rally. Here comes Ronald McClendon. Right up the gut. Look at the seam created by the right guard and tackle. There's no one there, no safeties. Anyone? Ronald McClendon takes it to the house, 52 yards. Look at Ben Troop. We've talked about him all day. Ah, he hurdles the defender, the big tight end. Very athletic. Nice catch and run. But Ole Miss wouldn't go away. They continued to pound the ball and down 17-13 for Sean Pearson. And the Rebels go up by three in the waning moment. Here is Leak's last chance. Gators down by three. Hotty, hotty, gosh almighty, who the heck are they? Flim, flam, bim, bam, Ole Miss wins in the swamp. They say a dirty word at the end that I didn't want to say. Good. Ole Miss 20 to 17, beating Florida for the second straight year. Manning put up solid numbers. Leak throws it 27 times, 240 yards, but he did throw three picks, including the desperation one late in the game. So Florida falls again at the swamp. You know what? Zook's fourth loss at the swamp already. Spurrier only had five. SC bouncing back nicely from the loss at Cal 37-17. Arizona State stayed with USC for a little while. They just didn't have the firepower to hang with the Trojans. Matt Liner throwing for a couple of touchdowns. Trojans got the ground game going in that one too. Washington beat uh. UCLA on the road. Schedule sets up very nicely for the Huskies in the Pac-10. They've got SC, they've got Oregon, they've got Wazoo all coming to Seattle. Hey, better than having to go on the road to play him. Yep. Washington's up on UCLA 13-0 in the Rose Bowl second quarter. Auburn trying to salvage this season and get things going. Take on Tennessee coming up in moments. College Game Day Scoreboard, presented by Suzuki's award-winning automobiles, motorcycles, ATVs, and marine engines. All proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman Trophy.
It is going to be a renewal of one of the great rivalries of the South. Tennessee and Auburn has been interrupted since the SEC expanded to 12 teams and went to division play. But we've got a treat coming up right now. Down on the plains in Jordan Hare, Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey will be on hand to bring us the Vols and the Tigers. Jordan Hare Stadium filled to capacity and why not? It's Tennessee and Auburn and here come the Tigers. Tunnel, Tennessee takes the field, but what an atmosphere here in Auburn, Alabama. The matchup between the Volunteers and the Tigers. Kickoff is coming next.